In this video, my dear students and other viewers, we continue our coverage of basic concepts of chemical bonding. After this presentation, which will cover these sections from our textbook referenced in the description below, you will gain the following skills. That is, you will be able to predict chemical formulas for ionic compounds, predict trends in lattice energies, define electronegativity and no electronegativity and no it's and no electronegativity trends on the periodic table, define polarity and sort different bonds by polarity, and separately, know how to calculate reaction enthalpies from individual bond enthalpies. And please note that we will skip section 8.7 of the text. I also will not be teaching you about resonance because we'll be discussing that in depth in organic chemistry later on for those of you who take that class from me or from someone else. All right, before getting into it though, I want to share with you some hilarious clips. So here are some funny links to some Simpsons clips that are relevant to chemistry. And so I'll post links to them floating over my head right now or in the description below. We now get into ionic bonding. So according to our text referenced here and in the description beneath this video, ionic substances generally result from the interaction of metals on the left side of the periodic table with non-metals on the right side, excluding the noble gases. For example, when sodium metal, Na solid, is brought into contact with chlorine gas, a violent reaction ensues, summarized by this balanced chemical equation, where the product, sodium chloride, is shown right here. You can see because the delta H is strongly negative, this is a very exothermic process. Now, sodium chloride is composed of sodium cation and chloride anions arranged in a three-dimensional array depicted at an atomic level in this figure taken from our text. So, sodium chloride forms then when a sodium atom transfers its single 3s valence electron to chlorine like this. Now the arrow here indicates that the electron is being transferred from the sodium atom to the chlorine atom. Now once this happens, these two atoms become ions, that is charged atoms because they've gained or lost electrons. Each ion, that is the sodium cation and chloride anion, end up now with an octet of electrons. Sodium ends up having a configuration like that of the noble gas neon, which is the noble gas that precedes it, because it loses its outermost 3s valence electron, and now has eight valence electrons that were buried in its lower inner shell electrons, and chloride ends up with a noble gas configuration like that of argon. Make sense? Good. Now, in order to predict the chemical formulas of ionic compounds, we have to first determine what charge each element will preferentially form as a cation or anion based on its location on the periodic table. For example, sodium will form Na+, not Na2+, because sodium is in column 1. Aluminum will form aluminum 3+, not aluminum 2+, because it's in column 3. And similarly, chlorine will form Cl- anion, not Cl2-, because it's in column 7a, and so forth. We then write the cation on the left and the anion on the right in our formula. Then, if necessary, we add subscripts next to the cation and anion in order to ensure that their total combined charges equal zero. For example, if I combine a cation that has a charge of X plus with an anion that has a charge of Y minus, then I do it in the following way in order to get an overall zero charge. Now this whole process heralds back to something that we learned back in chapter two, which I'll link to floating over my head or in the description below, which process I personally call crossy chargy, or it might be spelled crossy chargy. I don't really know. They're not really words. Here's how it works though. I've got cation A with a charge of plus X, anion B with a charge of minus Y. In order to figure out the final ionic formula that they will make when they combine, I just grab X, put it down there, and Y, and put it down there. That gives me the final formula of AYBX, in which the cation combined charges will cancel out the anion combined charges. That takes us then to a beautiful problem from our chapter eight set, predict the chemical formulas of the ionic compounds formed between the following pairs of elements. Now you're welcome to pause and try these on your own and then hit play and I'll do two of these examples with you. The rest I'll leave you to do on your own. Let's begin then with aluminum with aluminum and fluorine. As you can see, based on the fact that aluminum is in column three of the periodic table, it will have a plus three charge. Fluorine, in contrast, is all the way on the right in column seven A of the periodic table, so it's going to have a minus one charge. By the same process, lithium being in column one of the periodic table will have a plus one charge and nitrogen being all the way over there in column 5a will want to have a minus three charge in order to shift three boxes to the right to feel like the nearest noble gas. To put their formulas together then, I just do crossy chargy. So I grab the one above the F and make that the subscript next to the aluminum. The three above the aluminum make it the subscript next to the F. That gives me this final formula. And as I'm sure you know, we drop ones as subscripts so that the final formula of aluminum fluoride will be the one shown right here. 
By analogy, for lithium nitride, we grab the three above the nitrogen, throw it down as a subscript for lithium, and the one above the lithium, throw it down as the subscript next to nitrogen. This ends up giving us this formula, which of course simplifies to the one shown right here. That ends this video. Please stay tuned for the next one in which I'll continue teaching you more about basic concepts of chemical bonding. Until then, my dear students and others, please have an enjoyable rest of your day.